Hi everyone, I'm Clara and welcome to another episode of Young Money brought to you by SGX. In the last episode, I was sharing why I've decided to start investing. But as I was doing my own research, I realized that I was still not sure what are the various financial asset classes. So I'm very excited for today's episode because I'll be chatting with my colleague Sudan, who is a seasoned investor, to learn about the various financial asset classes. Let's go! So this is my colleague Sudan. Sudan, exactly how many years have you been investing for? So I've been investing for the past like 11 years or so, Clara. 11 years? Yeah. So when did you start? Back in 2009. Yeah. So before that, I was uh, reading up on investing uh, during my national service days. Oh wow. So you mean when you were in camp, you were actually reading books about investing? Did your friends tease you for doing that? Not really. So they would be playing PSPs and I'll be reading books and doing my free time. Other times like we would go and play football and stuff. So then now it's my turn. I want to start investing. But I realised that there were some financial asset classes and financial terms that I'm not so familiar with. If you can explain to me what are some basic financial asset classes that I should know, what would it be? First off is stocks. So stocks is a listed company. For example, let's say you're an entrepreneur. Let's say Clara's Chicken Rice Limited. So it's now listed on the stock market. Okay. So before that was a Clara's Chicken Rice Private Limited. So it's a private limited company. So you grew, your business grew, and then you listed on stock exchange. So those things on the stock market are real businesses, yep. real companies yep. that are you know, everyday generating profits or revenue, cash flow, and stuff like that. You used the chicken rice analogy to explain to me what stocks are. How about bonds? What are bonds? Bonds and stocks are similar in the sense that. When investors buy into them, they are lending money to the company. For example, your chicken rice store, you are a private company. You want to grow your business, that's why you list on the stock exchange and you want to get uh, investors money in. For example, you list your company for $100 million. So when you list it, you get $100 million in from investors. So using that money, you can grow. Similarly, for bonds, uh, they sell the bonds to get money from investors to grow their business as well. For example, the investor buys into a bond. In return for the money, right, he will get coupons. Those are the interest rates that you get from the bank account. Similar concept in the sense that it's for lending money to the company. How about REITs? REITs are real estate investment trusts, underlying are all uh, properties. Instead of owning an outright property, you can actually invest in properties through REITs. Wait, uh, when you mention property, do you mean the malls that I see? So you can invest in properties in the sense of private properties like the condos and stuff. But those who can't afford that a huge outlay, what they can do is look at REITs. Like you mentioned, shopping centers. Those are REITs as well. There's Capital Land Mall Trust, which is a shopping mall REIT. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be familiar with Plaza Singapura and yes. stuff like that. REITs are also very visible in the sense that you can basically go out and see the properties, whether it's doing well. What REITs do is like basically pull various investors' money and like buy a property for example. How about ETFs? ETFs is called exchange rate funds. A lot of stocks coming into one particular asset class. The STI ETF, Straits Times Index ETF, it's uh, 30 companies in one ETF. So basically, if you invest in the STI ETF, you diversify your holdings into all the 30 companies. So instead of buying one share each, you mm. can buy into this ETF and diversify instantly. Compared to let's say if you buy stocks that are only from a certain industry, there's no diversification. Whereas ETFs, you just have to plonk a certain amount and there's diversification done for you. Yeah, that's right. Across like various industries. Oh, okay. What are other financial asset classes that I should know? Other asset classes that we haven't touched on, for example, savings. I wouldn't really say it's an asset class, but it's good to introduce. A lot of people believe that putting money in the bank is safe, but actually it's not. It's not? You know why? Why? I'm asking you why. Oh, why? <laughs> Let me guess. <laughs> uh, We're talking about it just now. Is it inflation? Yeah, that's right. So, inflation is basically eating our money away. Long term average inflation in Singapore is like around 2 to 3%. That's why everybody actually should learn how to invest. So, it's not for the elite few who should only invest. It's like any layman should learn how to invest and uh, should invest their money in the, that's put in the bank. I used to also think that it's only the elite few that can actually invest. But then I know that I was wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a savings account. How about endowments? Endowments is like insurance policies where people put aside money to save for a particular goal. Your children's education, for example, 18 years down the road. So they've set aside money like $200 every month to grow the money. That's an alternative thing that people can consider if they want to save up for their children's education. Can endowments only be used to save for a child's education or is there other ways that I can use it for? Endowments can also be used for other reasons, for example, retirement. Some people do it to like force save instead of putting in a bank account. So it depends on your financial objectives. What about robo advisors? 
Robo advisors are basically, as the name suggests, robo plus advisors. There's computer involved and there's also like, people involved. So are they really regulated by robots? No, of course not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what it does is profiles an investor and based on the investor's profile, it suggests things to invest in. Investing through robo advisors basically means that there are people actually managing your investments for you. Does that therefore mean that it's low effort on my end? There are people managing that full time. There are also like computer algorithms coming in to manage it for you. That's, that's where the robot, 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 part, <laughs> robo part comes in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should do a full robot dance. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Oh god, this is so much <laughs> Okay. You've mentioned that I can invest in stocks, REITs, bonds and ETFs if I actually do it via a robo-advisor. But if I can do all of that, I can invest in all of these four main asset classes by myself, why would I want to do it via a robo-advisor and still pay a fee? So it depends on how much time the investor has. If he or she has very little time and no time to monitor the investments, I think the robo-advisor path would be an easier way to yeah. Okay, understand. Compared to a DIY kind of approach. Now we have talked about all these asset classes, right? Mm. So we first talked about uh, stocks, mm. then REITs, ETS, bonds. We also touched on savings account mm. that we all know about, mm. endowments, uh, robot advisors. There's one more thing we haven't covered, you know, is it? That a lot of people are talking about as well. Now? Yeah. Can you give me I'm a clue? I'm sure you would have heard about that. Starts with B. Bitcoin. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> there's this thing called Bitcoins, right? Cryptocurrencies is another kind of, I wouldn't really say asset class, but another kind of thing that people like to buy and sell. But I don't really see cryptocurrencies as investments in the sense that we can't really value cryptocurrencies. For example, Clara's Chicken Rice Store, I can value a company based on the earnings that the company brings in. But for cryptocurrencies, we can't really value the instrument. Is there anything else that I need to know as a beginner investor? One thing we haven't covered is that you have to open your own CDP account to start mm. investing in Singapore stocks. My CDP account is where I will park my investments in. But in order to buy investments, how do I do that? On top of your CDP account, you need to have a brokerage account. The brokerage account is like a middleman. There's the exchange and there's you, right? So connecting both of you as a broker. Mm. So you have to open a brokerage account. There are many brokers available in Singapore. So you can just research on the best brokers available and open an account with them. Okay, so to start investing, I need to create both a CDP account and an online brokerage account. Yeah, to invest in the Singapore stock. Oh, okay. Thank you, Suda, for giving me this comprehensive and informative crash course. Now that I've learned more about what are these financial asset classes, I am ready to start investing and I will start off by creating my online brokerage and CDP accounts. Yeah, that's Okay. Thank you for watching this episode of Young Money brought to you by SGX. Do follow SGX on Telegram, simply search SGX Invest or scan the QR code to find out more about stocks listed in SGX. If this is the kind of content that you like, remember to like our video, subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. Until then, stay tuned for the next episode and I'll see you next time. Bye!